I've lived everywhere, man, in Texas anyway, from Waco to Lubbock, Corpus to El Paso, Dallas to San Antonio, with Houston in between. From the defenders of the Alamo centuries ago to Medal of Honor winners of today, we don't ever want to forget the contributions our Mexican-American forefathers have made to enrich the lives of all Texans. We also want to recognize today's rising stars that are paving the way for Texas' next 200 years. May God bless Texas. This is Tex-Mex TV. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tex-Mex TV. My name is Orlando Salazar, your host. And we are going to have a very interesting and fun show today. Don't want to put too much pressure on my guest, but uh, we're expecting a lot. He's a great guy. He's got a great sense of humor, and he uses his humor uh, in really great ways in what he does to earn a living and to uh, really enhance the lives of a lot of people. Uh, his name is Gabe Salazar. He's uh, no relation. Uh, sometimes I wish he was, and sometimes I'm glad he's not, but Gabe is a great guy, and we're going to learn a lot about him today. He's got a lot to share uh, about his life, his upbringing, and then what he does as a communicator uh, all over the United States. So we're excited to meet uh, Gabe and to learn all about you, bro. Welcome. Thank you, Alana. Honor and privilege to be here on Tex-Mex TV. Thank you, man. Uh, you are truly a Tex-Mex guy. I am. Born, I am. born in San Antonio. Grew up or in Houston. In Houston. And then back in San Antonio. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, there's people that will swear up and down, I grew up in Houston. And there's others that will swear up and down, no, I grew up in San Antonio. You know, my parents, uh, my mom had me as a teenager. And then, you know, when she married, they moved to San Antonio. They moved from San Antonio to Houston. And so I went back and forth uh, throughout my childhood from then. How about high school-wise? Where did you spend your high school years? San Antonio, Texas, graduate of East Central High School. East Central. Mm -hmm. what, what, what was your mascot? The home of the Fighting Hornets. Fighting oh, Hornets. Hornets. <laughs> Very cool, man. So you, uh, you kind of grew up in San Antonio high school years. Um, did you play sports? Did you do anything like that? I did. I was soccer. Uh, and then, um, you know, I, in fact, was the mascot. Of our eyes. But I didn't I didn't you, start doing anything positive. You were the Hornet. I was the Hornet. That was a really good one, too. I bet you were. And I, I, I didn't do anything positive until like my 11th and 12th grade year. I made the best of my 11th and 12th. But my 10th grade year, I actually spent in alternative school. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it meant I, I, I was getting into a lot of trouble. Okay. And so they sent me to a uh, an education uh, space off campus with some other students who were in behavioral uh, situations. They were, I, was, I, was in, I was involved in gang influence and gang activity and uh, just getting in a lot of fights. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, I, I, didn't, I didn't win a lot of them. Don't look at me like that because that girl was bigger than me. Yeah, but yeah exactly. <laughs> just kidding. I'm yeah. just kidding. I didn't fight no girls. There's some big girls but... in San Antonio. <laughs> no, you know, no offense. <laughs> okay, Charles Parker. Right? Exactly, right? <laughs> you weren't the first to say it. Yeah. But you ever see, I always have these jokes. Of, you, uh, you ever seen these cholos fight with the pinkies? You're like, what does yeah, that do? Yeah, exactly. And then their bandana falls, so just look like they're in a fight with a piñata. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Yeah. I, I, I was a troubled kid. Yeah. And that's a part of my story. But yeah, San Antonio was, was where I spent uh, my high school years. Now, you... you you're obviously a, a talkative person, a lively person. Nobody's did ever told mouth, me that. Did your mouth get you in trouble oh, in 10th time. grade? Big time. I, I can big imagine. Time. You had to be quick. When I, when I was living in Houston, uh, I remember the neighborhoods that I grew up with. Uh, I mean, it was a lot about like these, uh, these comebacks and you just get in these circles. You know, sometimes people would rap and then sometimes it would just be like put down contest. And uh, so I learned very quickly um, the line you couldn't cross with that because yeah. <laughs> I would get just get so close to that line and before it would turn into a fight. And But, I mean, being witty, being quick, being talkative, being able to talk myself out of stuff with teachers, uh, saying, Miss, I'm so sorry. And so, I miss Miss. <laughs> miss. <laughs> and I never knew my teacher's names. It was always Miss and Sir, right? <laughs> yeah, it was Miss. Uh, at what point did you realize that you kind of had the gift of gab? At what point did you say, I'm kind of good at talking? The first time somebody called me and asked me how much would it be to get you to come and speak, it wasn't in, like in school. Oh, really? Or, it wasn't no, in school. No, I just I I thought it was always uh, actually something that held me back because I I would say stupid stuff. I mean, you know, it's one thing when it's when it's directed to something positive, when like it's crafted, when it's polished and and well thought out. 
But when it's when you're just like saying, uh, here's the, here's the gift. Here's the, here's the problem with the gift of gab is is and people have said this to me, man. You have the power to just raise people out of the dead with words, right? But you also have the power. I mean, I can I can cut and destroy at the same time. People watching this probably say, I know people just like that. And so I was I was working at Oak Crest Intermediate in San Antonio, Texas. It was my first job out of, out of college, right? As a teacher? As an educator. Yeah, I wasn't a teacher. I worked with special education behavioral kids. So okay. I was like a paraprofessional. It was kind of very entry level into the educational space. And uh, one day we had a, a guest speaker that was going to speak to all the kids and they brought them all to the gymnasium and they said all the sixth and se seventh graders all or it was fifth and sixth graders intermediate so it's uh, fifth and sixth graders all across the room in, in the gym and we're waiting and waiting waiting for the speaker so he never came and uh so they my principal comes over and says hey gabe uh the speaker's not going to make it so i need you to get up and kill some time so I got up there and I was like, hey guys, you know, I was born to a teen mom, abandoned by my father. You know, he was murdered. They found him shot and left dead in his car. But you know what? I overcame struggles and challenges. I became the first in my family to go to college and you can too. But it's when you make good choices, you can make your choices or your choices will make you. And some of us say, we don't know how to make choices, but you do. You make choices every day from Fruit Loops, Lucky Charms, Cocoa Puffs, Captain Crunch, Nike, Adidas, Xbox, PlayStation, Whataburger, in and out you know, and, we're, and they're shouting things or, or doing drugs or saying no. And the kids say, no, can you guys say it louder? Can y'all go say it louder? No, how about you guys? And so wait a minute, time out. So you had never spoken to anybody before? Never, never. And that came out of your mouth? I mean, it was just, here's the amazing thing. When I finished speaking, there were two people in suits in the back of the room. Yeah. I didn't know who they were. Yeah. And they walked right up to me afterwards and they said, uh, who are you? Do you have a car? I said, no. I said, I actually work here. They said, well, we're with an advertising, ad advertising firm. We came to observe the original speaker happened to see you. The guy never showed up. What would happen? We're, we're, we find you. In fact, we've actually been looking and looking for a Latino. We can find all these other speakers, but we can't find Latinos that can, that can communicate to mass audiences the way you do. Have you ever thought about doing this professionally? Next thing you know, I'm on a tour for the U.S. Uh, it's called the U.S. Army All-American Bowl, traveling all throughout Texas, encouraging kids for this, in, to come to this event. Then after that, I'm on a tour with Domino's Pizza, Exxon Mobil, uh, uh, Boys and Girls Club, National, and then with uh, Taco Bell Foundation for Teens traveling all across the U.S. Taco Bell, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> We're trying to get away from that, you know, pigeon hauling, bro. I know. They, they even told me, don't say anything about the Chihuahua. Right? Please don't say anything about the uh, Chihuahua. You'll get on Taco Bell. But, you know, they gave me an opportunity to share hope yeah. and inspiration to communities that, that needed to see somebody. Now, I, I'm not always like, oh, it's got to be a brown person. But, you know, if, if the message can resonate to a, a, a young man or young lady to say, you know what, if, if this person can overcome these struggles and challenges, then, then, you know, why can't I? So you did overcome, obviously, a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. Looking back uh, at, obviously, what happened, what you just described a while ago, how did that impact you as a young kid, as a, as a kid? I don't know, how old were you when your dad was killed? I was four, and I didn't, I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I met him, I actually didn't meet him, I saw him one time. Mm. I was downtown San Antonio, Texas. My mom and I were getting onto a bus. And uh, if you've ever been downtown San Antonio, it is packed with tourists all the time. Even now during the pandemic, there's probably people all over. And uh, my mom and I were getting on the bus. And you know how there's two doors. You get on in the front and you get off in that middle door. Well, as soon as we get on, we put a little change in that little thing. My mom through the window sees my biological father walking on the sidewalk. So she pulls me right back off the middle part. Let's go my hand. She runs down the street and she's yelling, this is your son. This is your son. Wow. And this man looks at me for a second. And it, it, it's kind of weird to think yeah. back of like almost looking at an older me. And he runs away. I, I, he runs away from us. And and uh, I mean, who wouldn't? Run? My mom was pretty angry at the time. Sure. And um, about four months later, they found him shot and left dead in mm. his own Z-28 Camaro. He was a sheriff deputy, uh, was coming home after duty, stopped at a gas station and that's, they, they don't know. They, they, mm -hmm. they assume it was accidental. And then the officers that knew him and were working with him at the time said, no, uh, that wasn't accidental. Right. Yeah. Um, so your mom eventually gets married. Yeah. Yeah. To a Salazar. Yeah, I, I and, know that. And he changed, he changed my name and uh, I became a Salazar. So, and you have stepbrothers and sisters? I don't call them stepbrothers. Um, 
they're more half because we have the same mom. Well, it's true. And what's interesting is one of my brothers, you know this because right. you know him. I, I mean, do. we look like twins almost. You, well, you do. You look and, so much alike. And uh, so uh, I've got... My, uh, and he's got a little bit of your personality too. So I, it's kind of good to keep you guys, you know, uh, separated. And he and he brings me to a, to a more professional space as well yes. when I'm running. Yes. Good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Awesome. So I do have... Uh, and um, so, but we, we're all family. We're all Salazars. And so they, I never... I never feel like their step. Yeah. And, and I think that's something beautiful even about family today is, is uh, I've, I've learned this, that family isn't always the, the shared blood. It's the experience and the love and yeah. the challenges that you go through. I together. agree. I have friends that I consider probably even closer than my own brother. So yeah. I, I'm with you 100%. What's the quote? Uh, friends are God's apology for family. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. And they come in handy. They do. Um, so you, you were kind of picked out of the crowd, so to speak, doing these tremendous tours all over the country. How long did that last? It's still going on. Okay. Um, it's still going on. I, I uh, in fact, just recently started doing my more in-person assemblies and uh, been doing a lot of virtual stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's been the most challenging because I, I did one for Mejia, Texas uh, this week. And it was my first live. I, I honestly think it, it, if, if it wasn't the only live assembly in the state of Texas, it was possibly even in the United States. Um, so we had the whole high school. And at the end, you know, I told my story of my abandonment, about how I struggled having a father. I, I tell about how I was jealous of other, other kids that had dads. Mm -hmm. I remember even in field day, the kid, Mijo, run, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then on, on field trips, we'd go and, you know, or we'd go to the zoo. And one dad, one time, he, he pulled us uh, aside. He was our chaperone at the San Antonio Zoo. And I remember he put his arms around us. He said, guys, we're going to have a good time today. Let's have fun. And I, I may not remember your names, but how about I call all of you my sons for today? And if you want, you can call me dad. And he gave us a group hug. And when he did that, I started crying in front of all my friends. And, and the lesson there is I realized that, that it, it really wasn't me that was missing on having a dad as much as it was him missing on having a good kid. And I told the, to the students, I said, I said, maybe nobody's ever given you credit for being a good kid. Maybe nobody's ever given you credit for having value and being loved, but you are. And, and, and one of the questions is this young boy named Alexis afterwards, uh, kids ask me, where'd you go to college? Question, question, answer. Where'd you go to college? Or, or famous people that you met? Or where'd you buy your shoes? Whatever, right? Stuff like that. And then this one kid, Alexis goes, how'd you get over not having a dad? That's a very good question. I said, I traded hate for love. I hated him for the longest time. But I said, if, if, if the human spirit's stronger than any emotion, and, and, and if an emotion's a choice, and if I'm hating this man that I never even knew, can I, can I replace that hatred with love and love a man that I never even knew? And when I did that, Alexis, I became a better speaker. I became a better father. I became a better husband. I became a better human being because I didn't allow hatred to live in this address called Gabe Salazar. And I, and I said, so I went to his gravesite and I stood over him and I, for, I told him I forgive you. And uh, I, I, be, I began to feel like a cleansing and, and I said, Alexis, where's your dad? This is true. I said, Alexis, where's your dad? And he says, I don't know. And right there in front of hundreds of kids, he starts crying. Mm. And uh, I mean, there was no soft music or no yeah, dim lights. Right. It was just yeah. right there in the gymnasium because we're socially distanced, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I said, Alexis, if I was your dad, I would want to come and hug you. Can I hug you right now? And I went over there and I gave him a, oh, he's just crying. I said, you're a good kid. And you know what? I can't, I can't say for what happened in the past, but you can break the cycle and you could be the dad in the future for your children that you would have yeah. wanted. And I said, if, if, you, if you identify with Alexis, would, would, would you come and give him a hug? And like six other boys came over. Boom, and I was like, wow. You know, there's something genuine and powerful about being in person. And I think in society, we need that close contact. We're designed for connection. Absolutely. That's stuff I'm not experiencing on the virtual assemblies. Yeah. Um, at some point, you, your, your speaking abilities kind of converge with your faith because you, you're currently working at a church. I am. And talk to us about how those things all kind of came together. I'm bivocational as a student minister at First Baptist Dallas for Dr. Robert Jeffers. And um, I, I really 
I have always done that for different churches where I've been a speaker. But how did you first get involved with church? Did did you grow up going to church? I did. I I grew up, uh, I grew up, uh, in fact, um, here's, here's the thing too. There's family that will say, no, Gabe grew up Catholic (laughs) and there's other, no, Gabe grew up Pentecostal, but now I'm more Bapticostal, meaning I still believe in laying in hands and falling out in the spirit, but I just don't believe in catchers. There's a joke there. It's all right, Alonzo. Yeah, it's okay. yeah I, I went over my head, but that's okay. I like that church. <laughs> no, well, but I was a pitcher. The, Go the, ahead. Yeah. The point is, is that um, I, I believe faith is so important. Um, you know, when you look at organizations like the YMCA and others like that who have been so successful on reaching the holistic part of a person, I've learned so much and taken so much from organizations like that and said, hold on, if they're such a successful organization, but they believe in the body, mind, and spirit. So we're, we're really pouring into the, to the body with athletics, and we believe the statistics that say that the, the more a young man or young woman is involved in sports, the, the more likely they are to stay away from drugs and alcohol and gang violence and, and drop out. So there's obviously proof there. Now, now, the mind, obviously, we know, hey, education is, is, is the key. So it's not only uh, college, uh, you know, it's not only high school, but college or, or, or uh, other forms of education as well. But what about the, the spirit? We're missing that. That's, that's a huge component about somebody being balanced. Now, when we look at issues today where uh, depression, anxiety, uh, suicide, all of these things that are astronomical numbers today for students in America, but hold up. Th- these are athletes that are saying they want to commit suicide. Hold up. These are... These are uh, uh, so, uh, valedictorians yeah. that are saying, I'm depressed. Mm-hmm. What are you depressed about? You have the best grades. It's obviously the spirit. Right. There's something that's missing. And I believe in, in my faith that, you know, Jesus is my savior. And uh, I don't get to share this in schools a lot, but I mean, I was involved in gang influence. I was in alternative school. And on the way home, uh, there was a guy named uh, Joaquin that invited me to a youth rally. I went, it was there that I walked down the altar, I said this prayer, and I don't remember the exact words I said, but I remember it ended in the name of Jesus. And I got up, I was a different person. I cried harder than I'd ever cried before that day. And it wasn't, I felt sad, like, oh my God, God is so mad at me. It was like, I felt like this love and this, this, these, I felt this embrace from God, my savior. And I went back and I, I began to tell others about about this transformation that I had. I started a Bible club and and uh, we grew out of a science class and we moved into, anybody watching from East Central High School, you'll know this. Uh, Dr. Langston Williams was, was, was my principal that year and we grew out of the science class. They moved us into the library. Our Bible club grew uh, so big, it had, we had to be moved out of the library and they moved us into the gymnasium. Wow. And there's still young people today that, that call me and say, Gabe, it was, it was then that I, 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 I found God and I'm still serving God. And even my family are going to church today because of the work that you did. And I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I really I had, there was no formula to what I was doing yeah. except enthusiasm. Well, obviously you were gifted. And I, and I think that God gives us gifts innately, right? It's in our genetics. It just how we use them, right? Mm-hmm. How do we use the gifts that God gives us? We can use them for his kingdom or not. And so obviously you were gifted and you met Christ and then you started using your gifts for him and it just led you down so many different paths. Now, you're a very talented guy and I know that you have had, call it flirtations, call it more than that with Hollywood and with uh, the entertainment business. So talk to us how some of those things came into play. Well, uh, about seven years ago, my wife and I, we did move to uh, Hollywood and started working in television development. There are production companies that have been constantly trying to, and the, here's, here's where uh, I really get excited. Did you move there because you got shoulder tapped or do you just said, hey, we're going to just pack up and go there and see what we can make of it? It was, it was a little bit of both because, um, you know, they say Hollywood is ran out of uh, ideas. And, and so when we moved there, they didn't really understand like a Latino that looked like me to be on, on mainstream television. Honestly, they would, okay, who's like you? Well, uh, at that time, even Mario Lopez was not doing what he was but doing. The, now. the guy that was on Chips, 
You guys look a lot alike, <laughs> Eric bro. Estrada. Yeah, man. There's a little come on resemblance there. <laughs> it's funny. I post this picture every day on Father's Day, and I post Happy Father's Day, and people will always say, I didn't know Eric Estrada was your dad. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I met him one time. We were, at, we were at an event together, and and one guy goes, oh, my God, Eric, you look like you could be Gabe's dad. And he was so mad. Oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah. Mad. I mean, so I think mad. your teeth are whiter than his, though, bro. Um, you know, it's a lot of flossing and no coffee. There you go. That is. Well, I, I, um, I have aspirations and dreams to be able to do that. We've gotten so close in working with some projects. Um, and it, I've, I've always felt like Hollywood has been, uh, a, a really bad, um, uh, like, like a father. Uh, what's it like, uh, what's the, what's the term for a father that's, that's absent that's like, hey, I'm going to pick you up. We're going to get together. We're going to do some great stuff. And you're like, yeah, never shows up. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yes, I've been in, I, I've, I, only my wife knows how honestly close I've been to becoming a household name. Uh, but the truth is, is when you stick to your values and you stick to your beliefs, you stick to your faith and, and, and you'll just say no to things, it's amazing how those doors close. And uh, I just have to believe with all my heart that God has kept me from some things. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I'm okay with that. Um, I think if I were to go ahead and choose to be, you know, uh, a negative or, or say blue jokes or say stuff that's, that's an, uh, enticing to the negative. I mean, I definitely could, could probably go after, uh, the curtails of, of like, uh, like, a Carlos Mencia or George Lopez or, or that type, but that's not my goal. My goal is I want, I want people to leave my events feeling hopeful, energized, excited, um, frustrated at times because like, well, why aren't things working out? Well, maybe I need to fix some things in my life. That's, that can be frustrating for some, but I believe it's possible for all. And, and now with the cancel culture, I mean, you cannot vary one centimeter in your thought or your speech or you're out. Yeah. I mean, there, there is no, uh, like fudge factor in anything right now. You, you, you have to toe the line in Hollywood or else boom. Yeah, dead. I, I definitely am tap dancing on eggshells a lot mm -hmm. uh, because tr truth and honestly, there, there's there's people that I don't agree with, but doesn't mean I can't like them. Right. And and yeah. that's one thing that people don't understand about me is that, you know, I have very my wife and I both have very strong values in what we believe in and and not much is going to change that. But it doesn't mean that I can't befriend. I can't work with. I can't partner with people, because if the end game is to help a kid accomplish X. Then, then we can work together to do that. Uh, but there's some people that have chosen to not do that simply because uh, I believe something or, 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 or there's some people, frankly, that have chosen to not work with me because I'm brown and that they've never seen anybody. It's amazing how even now in the year 2021 that I'll go to a school and they'll say, hey, you know, you're the first Latino to, to be on this stage. Wow, that's pretty remarkable. Uh, there's good opportunities that I know that come along with, with what I'm doing. And there's also dangers uh, of, of being able to walk into spaces and say the things I'm saying that are pretty shocking. Um, and, uh, but I never want to be divisive. I always want to use my words to uh, bring unity and clarity and hope. And if it's not providing that, then it's probably not the space for me to be at. So I think one of the things about you being a Latino, Hispanic is two things. One, um, there's just not a lot of people rising to the level that you have. A lot of us, I, I think as, as Texas, as conservative minded kind of people, we haven't produced enough talent. So I'm glad you're there. I'm glad you're there representing us. And, and I hope you continue to go through more doors and continue to do what you're doing. Cause obviously we need you. Now, you, you talked about your wife, both of you going to California. So tell us about your wife and your kids, your family and all that. Yes. Yes. My wife, her name is Nancy. And uh, she is a uh, former television news broadcaster from San Antonio, Texas. And I remember the first time I saw her on TV, I said, I'm going to marry that girl right there. And my brother was like, you're stupid. You're never going to meet her. I was like, watch this. I was kissing the TV. <laughs> and we went to church and uh, we're singing Christmas so songs because we're on Christmas time. The yeah. back doors open up. There she was. And it wasn't Santa. It was the news lady. Oh, she wow. walked in and... and, and Just did, attending or was she doing a story? Her, her parents are from the same church that my parents go to oh, in, wow. in San Antonio. And, and I, I, I fell in love with her. And wow. it didn't take long to, to uh, propose to her and uh, marry her. And now we have uh, four kids together. 
Uh, so we have Mark, Milan, Simone, and Sebastian. And then we moved to Los Angeles. And I mean, talk about, it was not just, you know, a lot of people have, man, I'm going to move to LA and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow these dreams and I'm yeah. going to go into these meetings. And I mean, it wasn't just, I took, it was like the Beverly Hillbillies Latino oh, version. Yeah. We were all go, getting on the, yeah. on the pickup and, and went out there. And so to you were just in the family, minivan. <laughs> we did. We, we took everybody out there and we had a great experience. I love Los Angeles. I love Southern California. Um, I've got a lot of friends there. And uh, friends that are like family, remember? And uh, some great churches I got involved in there. Uh, but it's just, it, it's so beautiful, but it's its hard. It is challenging. There's a lot of challenges there. And so we felt after uh, six years of, of meetings and broken hearts of like, oh my gosh, this thing, we were so close to doing this. Uh, it was time to move back. And then we moved back to Texas. So what's next for you? What, what do you see uh, on the horizon? Obviously more speaking to kids. Uh, I think that's a passion for you. Uh, possibly TV, who knows? But what what do you see coming? We're still pitching. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, television development and the creative side of that, we're still coming up with ideas. I think now is 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 there's no better time than right now to start. Um, you know the values and the beliefs and the things that you truly stand on. Uh, speak out for those things. And so um, there's stuff that I'm in works with and talks with, 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 uh, with what we do basically. And we're looking at scripted reality is what we're looking at, taking what we do. Because um, I've had the privilege of speaking to now over a million students in yeah, assemblies. That, a million, that's awesome. Um, and so how, you know, it's going to take another 10 years for me to have to do that. So how do we get that to translate that to, uh, or, or to, exp you know, to maximize that exponentially would be through television. And it's just harder. It's just, it takes money. It takes uh, work and, but we're, we haven't stopped. Good. And so as long as, as I'm still speaking and people are still calling, I'm going to keep trying for that. So how will, how can somebody get in touch with you? How can they call you and get in touch with you to have you come and speak? Very simple with my website, gabesalazar.com. Uh, you can find me on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. My Instagram is, is official Gabe Salazar. My TikTok is the Gabe Salazar. There's a lot of ways to find me. Um, and I'm always available to speak at schools, conferences, churches, uh, camps, or events. And I, I love to connect. Cool, man. Well, I'm so glad you were here. Uh, I think people got an idea as to uh, his personality, his sense of humor. Obviously, I didn't get it, but that's okay. As long as you guys got it, that's good. So, Gabe, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank Look you. Forward thank to you. Seeing so you, glad to be on your show. Uh, and we'll, we're, we're friends. We're personal friends, so we'll be seeing each other. So uh, thank you guys for joining us for another episode of Tex-Mex TV. If you have any ideas or you have somebody you think would be really interesting to have on the show, you can uh, send an email to info at texmextv.com, info at texmextv.com. And I always end the show with a Vaya Con Dios segment. And uh, not all of us are as talented and have the capabilities uh, that Gabe has. You know, we, we, we're all good at, at, at different things uh, that God has gifted us with. But he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, he says, no matter what you do, no matter what you eat, you drink, anything that you do, do all to the glory of God. And then he says, you know, do that in a way that's not offensive to people, whether they're people you know or you don't know. And then he says, do it in a way that is not going to be offensive. So he wants us to live for him, no matter what we do. And as Gabe has shared, his gift and his ability is communicating, but there's so many ways we can do stuff for the glory of God. So we, I, I ask you to please search that out. And if you haven't been serving God, using your talents for his kingdom, I urge you to do it because you can make an eternal difference uh, for someone's life if you just allow the Lord to use you in that way. So thank you for joining us today. God bless you. And we'll see you next time on Tex-Mex TV.